Hello Year 3, it's Mr Howell. I'm here with a maths video for you today. It is the 24th of the 2nd, 2021. And today our learning objective is to measure time in hours. We're going to be looking at how we're going to be able to measure time in hours. You've already looked at measuring time in seconds so far. And now we're going to look at hours. You can see from our in focus task that we've got a man starting his car journey at, and I'm not going to tell you what the time is, I want you to see if you can tell me what time it is, in the morning, and he ended the journey at a different time in the afternoon. The question is asking me how long was his journey? What was the time that it took him from his starting point to arrive at his destination. So we want to know how long he was travelling for. So now we're going to have a look at what this would look like to be able to help us answer this question. Here is our red car starting at the castle and it's going to travel along the road all the way along past the sheep to the windmill over here. That's going to be our destination. Now, obviously this is not to scale. I very much doubt it would take as long as the uh, timings that we've been given suggest that it would take, unless it went very, very slowly. Obviously we're just using this to represent the time that it takes. So here at the starting point, the time on the clock that we can see here, which I have improvised, which I would encourage you to do something similar as well if you need to, is, going to be your first question to work out. What is the time? Let's have a look at this together then. So we can see here, this longer telescope is going to be my minutes hand. And then the shorter blue one is going to be the hours. So if we have a look at the minutes hand, we can see it is pointing to the nine. You can see that we've got four and then eight and then and one in the middle is nine. And if we remember, we can use the minutes to count in our fives to work out the number of minutes. So if we start with one, we've got five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45. So it is 45 minutes past something. And to work out what the hour is, we need to look at the hour hand. Now this hour hand looks as if it's pointing, well, what would you say? I would say it's pointing nearest to the 11. and it's gone past the 10. So does that mean that it is 11.45 or 10.45? Which one of those is correct? And it is indeed 10.45 because it hasn't quite yet reached that 11 hour. So this is 10.45 and that is my starting point for this car. And remember, it is the journey time that we're after. So it's the time between now and the car moving. It's this moving time that we're interested in. We're interested in how long it takes for the car to arrive at the windmill. Make sure I park off the train track. So it's the journey time it takes for that red car to arrive. And if we now look at the time on our clock, we'll see that the time has changed. You'll notice that my minutes hand is the same, but the hours hand is the one that's changed. And you can see that it's between the one and the two. So what does that mean the time is now? We know that the minutes is the same, so we know that must be 45 minutes past. And we can see that the hour hand is not quite on the two, so it must be 1.45. 
So at the start, we had 10.45 and at the end, we had 1.45. So how long did it take for the car to get from the castle to the windmill? We're going to look at a couple of different methods to show how we can work out this. Lulu used the method whereby she's identified the start time as 10.45. She's then recognised that each jump could be represented by an hour. So the first hour would take us to 11.45. The next hour would take us to 12.45. And then another hour would take us to 1.45, which we already know is our answer. What we can then do is use that information, is use the number of jumps that we've done on our timeline to be able to work out that total distance. So if we now have a look at those jumps, we can see that we've jumped one hour, two hours, and three hours, which has given us a total journey time of three hours. So that's one way that we can use a timeline to help us to answer this kind of question. Now there is another method. We're going to have a look at the second method now, which you might prefer. Ravi has recognised that 10.45 to jump in different amounts might be a bit difficult. So what he's decided to do is to find the nearest hour. So he's identified as 10.45 as the starting point. And the next hour after that is 11 o'clock, which is only 15 minutes away. What he's then done is made a note of that so that he could write that down later on and add it together. All he's done then is jumped in hours from 11 o'clock to 12 and from 12 o'clock another hour to 1 o'clock because it's easy to do. Now to get from 1 to 1.45 it's only 45 minutes. Now as long as he makes a note of that 45 minutes again he's hopefully going to be able to get the correct answer. Plus the two hours that he's added as well. If he adds all of those answers together hopefully he will get the correct answer of three hours because 15 minutes plus 45 minutes gives us a total of an hour plus the two hours that are already there gives us a total of three hours. Let's have a look at our guided practice questions then. So the first one is asking us to work out the length of time between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock and we can see that the first time on the left hand side is 10 and the one on the right hand side is 2. And you can see on our timeline here we've got the hours in between. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to jump one hour each time because I can see that that is the easiest way to do it with the numbers that I've got. And then I'm just going to add these hours together because I can see that I've made those jumps. In total I have made four jumps. So I've got four hours in total for that question. Question B then. Now this is a little bit trickier because you'll notice that we have got our start time of quarter past nine, 9.15, and our end time of 4.15. But we've got no timeline. We haven't got any numbers on that timeline at all. So it's going to be a bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the clocks to help me. So I'm going to start off by looking at our starting time um, at 9.15 and having a look to see how many lines I might need to draw in between 9.15 and 4.15. So if I mark on the left hand clock where 9.15 is and roughly where the last increment is between 4.15, I'm going to then see if I can count and see if I can work out how many lines. So 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to do six lines. Now these aren't equally spaced out, but it's just for a quick representation. Now immediately, if there's six marks, you might think there's six hours, but just let's see if that's right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 jumps until we get to 4.15. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check my answer. So I'm just going to try and write the hours 
not the minutes because the minutes doesn't change, but I'm just going to write the hours that each of those marks represents. And then what I'm then going to do is I'm going to just add up those number of hours that I've jumped. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I've jumped seven. So in total, it is seven hours. Our last guided practice question for today then. We've got an activity which starts at 11.55 and which ends at 1.55. So the first question I'm going to ask is what's the same and what's different about those two times? I wonder if you spotted the hours and minutes. So the hours are different, but the minutes here are the same. And that's going to help me to be able to answer this question because I know that I can jump in hours quite easily. So the next question is on our timeline here. How many lines am I going to draw? What increments am I going to put on there? I wonder how many you came up with. Now you might be surprised that it's not as many as you think. In fact, I think it's only one. So let's see if I'm right. So what would that represent? Well, it would represent 12.55. And then if we take a jump from 11.55 to 12.55, that is one hour. And then another hour from 12.55 to 1.55 is another hour. So if we then add those two hours together, we can see that we would get a total of two hours. So the total time between 11.55 and 1.55 is two hours. However, we've got an extra question here, which is saying, what if the last activity ended at two o'clock? I wonder what that would make the time in hours. Would it be the same number of hours? Would it be slightly different minutes, perhaps? Have a see if you can see if you can answer that question. On to your tasks then for today. You're going to have three questions to work out the length of time that it took these three people to complete some projects. I want you to use the same methods that we've been looking at in this video. So using the timelines to work out how many lines you need in between and what those times would represent. And if you need to go back and look at the video a couple of times to um, help you, that's absolutely fine. What I also would like you to do is to think carefully about looking at the clocks to help you work out how many lines you might need to draw. After you've done that, I want you to spend some time on TT Rockstars and I want you to see if you can beat your own personal best score. And then I want you to check back because there is going to be a challenge at the end of this video for you. Don't go anywhere yet, year three. It's challenge time. So today we are going to have a little bit of a time-based problem and it's going to involve you using some reasoning and some problem-solving skills to be able to answer it. You are driving along in this blue car and you are trying to make your way over to the garage because there's something not quite right with your car and you want to get there as soon as you can. However, on your journey, there are a couple of problems. The first problem you have is that there is a bus which has broken down and it is being towed, which means you're not going to be able to go past it. So you decide that you're going to go a slightly different way to see if you can be quicker. However, unfortunately, on your trip, you find there is another problem because unfortunately, there is a car which probably shouldn't be facing the sky like that. And unfortunately, you can't go that way either. So you're going to have to go the long way around to get to the garage. Now, I want you to see if you can work out the path to get there, but also you need some times. So let's have a look at the times and see if you can work out the answer to the problem. OK, year three. So this is the time that you are going to set off to go to the garage. So here is going to be where you set off. And this is the time. This is the time that you would normally arrive at the garage. However, because of the delays, 
this is the time you actually arrive at the garage. My question to you, year three, should you choose to accept it, is how long did it take to get to the garage? Thank you very much for watching this video. Put the answer to your challenge on the sheet that will be uploaded to Teams. And I look forward to speaking to you on another video again soon. Don't forget you can email your work to year3 at ssjs.co.uk if you aren't able to upload your work to Teams. Take care year3.